Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a true film look using only DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools. So, no LUTs, no plugins like Dehancer Pro, nothing external. All you need is DaVinci Resolve. And just to be clear, we'll be working with Rec. 709 footage here. Not log, not raw, which is something a lot of people ask about. So yes, this approach works on Rec. 709 as well. So without further ado, let's dive in. Alright, as usual, uh, let me start by showing you my project settings. Uh, here in the master settings, uh, you can see the timeline resolution I'm working with. And over in the color management settings, I'm using uh, DaVinci YRGB as the color signs. Uh, with the timeline color space set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and the output color space set to Reg 709 uh, Gamma 2.4. Okay, so here I have already set up my CST nodes. As I mentioned at the beginning, and today we are working with REG 709 footage. And this is actually a great example to show that even REG 709 images can still be pushed uh, toward a more uh, filmic result when the pipeline is set up correctly. For the input, I'm defining the uh, input color space and gamma accordingly and then converting everything into DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. I'm also using DaVinci Resolve's uh, built-in tone mapping uh, just to keep things clean and predictable at this stage. On the output side, instead of using a regular CSD, this time I'm using a DRT by Juan Pablo Zambrano. Uh, I really like this transform because of uh, how it handles color and highlight rolloff. Uh, it gives a very pleasing film leaning result uh, without feeling heavy or uh, overly uh, stylized. I'll leave the link below if you'd like to download it and try it yourself. And it's free download. That said, this is not mandatory. If you prefer, you can absolutely use a regular CSD note uh, converting from DaVinci White Gamut uh, Intermediate to Reg 709 and you'll still get a very similar result. And as you can see here, the difference between the original Reg 709 image and the DRT version is uh, actually quite uh, subtle. Okay, now before we get into any film emulation, uh, let's first check whether our contrast levels and white balance are in a good place. Here, looking at the waveform, our highlights are sitting close to about uh, 98 and the shadows are down to around 3. So honestly, this isn't too bad to begin with. Let's check her skin tones. For that, I'll switch over to the vector scope. As you can see, her skin is sitting right on the skin tone indicator line as well. So I'm not going to touch that at all. Of course, if your image uh, isn't this well balanced uh, to begin with, you would want to take care of uh, white balance and basic contrast first before moving on. Uh, you may want to check out my other tutorials where I show you how I uh, white balance images and adjust contrast. I'll leave the link in the top right corner. Now, the only thing that is really bothering me at this point is the highlight roll-off. Uh, I think it still feels a little too video-like. So in the first note, I'm going to soften the highlights just a bit. For this, I'll use the custom curves. First, let's turn on uh, editable splines. Then I'll gently bring down the very top end of the curve uh, to create a smoother highlight uh, roll-off. You can follow the change in the upper part of the waveform. Let me check. Maybe just a tiny bit more. Let's check it again. Yeah, that's looking much better to me. All right, in the next note, we'll be a bit more creative and add some filmic characteristics uh, using Film Look Creator. First, I'll switch it to Clean Slate so we can manually uh, add things ourselves. Now I'll increase the Film Look Blend and choose a core look that we like. 
I think the vintage one will work perfectly for this shot. It gives a more pronounced color separation and I really like how it feels here. Maybe we can decrease its strength a bit right about here. Let me toggle it on and off. Awesome. In the next section, uh, we'll push things a little further uh, to get closer to the look we want. I'll start with some subtractive uh, saturation, uh, just so we can see things a little more clearly. Now, let's play with the white balance slider a bit. I want something a little cooler uh, to, to bring out those uh, cyan walls, uh, without, of course, losing her skin tone. Nice. Now I'll add a bit of green as well, using the tint slider, right about here. Let's check it again. Great. As you can see, the original is definitely cleaner and more neutral. It's technically correct and very balanced. What we've achieved here in this note, however, is not about fixing anything. It's about shifting the character of the image. Uh, as you can see, the image now feels slightly denser, less pristine and uh, more interpretive, uh, all based on what you want to achieve. By the way, you can always go back to the uh, saturation slider and fine tune it. Here, I actually want the colors to feel a bit uh, stronger, so I'll push it even further. Let's toggle it on and off. Yeah, that's beautiful. The image is really feeling much more filmic and uh, more uh, intentional. By the way, this is also a good place to add a bit of fade, uh, if that's something you like. Uh, just lift things uh, slightly. Alright, next I'll add a vignette. I might also introduce a bit of halation here. Let me zoom in so we can really see uh, what it is doing. Now I'll adjust the strength. Not too much, not too little. I think that feels good. How about some bloom? Here I'm happy with the default settings. And finally some film grain. Again, I'm comfortable with the defaults here. Let's take one more look at how far we've come in this note. Yeah, beautiful color separation. So cinematic. Now, before we finish, I want to add one more note before the film look and introduce a bit of uh, glow. First, I'll switch this to soft light mode. Good. Before anything else, we need to define the source regions. So I'll turn this on and start adjusting the shine threshold. Okay, these are the areas I want to glow the most. Now let's switch back to the final result. At this point, I can soften the transition by increasing the, the spread. Just like this. Next, I'll play with the gain and gamma uh, to balance things out and keep the glow feeling uh, more natural, not exaggerated. Nice. By the way, the saturation it is adding feels a bit too strong. So I'll pull that back slightly, uh, especially since we already boosted saturation earlier uh, in the film creator node. Let's toggle this on and off. Beautiful. And that's basically it. This is how I approach building a filmic look using only DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools, step by step. If you found this helpful, feel free to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe for more color grading tutorials like this one. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.